So let's start to figure out how we can create clickable pie segments with links. So if I click on this, you can see it opens up another website. If you click on this one, it opens up again another website. So let's start to figure out this. So let's start and, and import the specific items we need for a clickable pie link. So in here, what I'm going to do is just above the functions, and you can see here it's truly blank. We're going to add up the item here I'm going to say import and what I want to import here is the chart.js items which is chart and then we're going to we can maybe make an enter out of it and just put it here down because we have multiple items we want to import as chart.js comma and then what I want to do is I want to put in all the items we need we need the arc which is basically the slice for the arc element and once we have that one we want to have as well a tool tip and we have the legend so you might wonder aren't we don't we need any of the other items such as the uh, scale no this doesn't have the scale at all so then we're going to say from and it's a string value chart.js so the uh, pi doesn't have a scale so that's very important to remember so then we have this what i want to do is i want to import as well the item for react chart.js so i'm going to say import and I already installed React Chart.js too, so that's a quick note. And uh, then I'm going to say pi. And then we're going to say here from string variable value and React dash Chart.js dash two. All right. So now we have this. The next thing what I want to do here is start drawing. So if I save this, refresh, nothing happens, of course. Let's start to draw something nice. So I'm going to say here the div. And then within this div, I'm going to create our pie chart. So the pie here allows us to draw the pie chart canvas immediately. And within here, I need to put in two specific objects. First of all, I need a data object. So I'm going to say data equals data object. Next, we have the options. Need the options object equals options. All right, so now we have this. And then I can save this and of course we get an error because both the data and the options object are not specified here. So what I'm going to do here now is start to put in uh, or specify that. So we're going to say constant data equals and then we can say here. What do we want to have? Well first of all we need the labels. The labels is a string value but also an array. An array is string values. So in here we can just say maybe uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and I'll just leave it like that next what I want to do here is we want to have the data sets so we want to have your data set which is an array index 0 by default because we are the starting point and then we're going to put in here the label which eventually will specify what this is although for the pie chart they will grab the label here instead of this label here but I can just say here sales or daily sales but that's all right doesn't matter so much Next, what I want to say here is uh, the data itself, which is the variables. And we can say here three, six, and nine. So once I did that, the next part, what I want to do here is so once we did the data here, what I want to do as well is I would like to have maybe a border color. And this could be, uh, I guess, uh, aqua or black. Let's make this black. And then we say comma here. We say here background color. And we want to make the slices because we have three different slices. We can give different colors. We're going to say here uh, red, blue, or let's make it aqua blue. And then we have here, this could be purple. All right. So now if I save this, refresh, it still gives an error. The reason why, it gets, uh, why we get an error is because the options are not defined. But we defined already the data. So we're getting closer to completing our chart. So then we say here data options. And I guess here for the options, we probably don't need anything at all. We can leave this blank. Save, refresh. All right, interesting. We are getting items and I realize what we are forgetting. So we have the pie here, we have this part here, but we didn't register it. And a registration means activating that specific item. So we're going to say chart JS. We're going to grab this one here. And then we're going to say dot register. So because we have imported it, but we didn't say yet, load these and use them. So that's what we're going to do here. What do we need to register? Basically these 
three components. Copy these components, put them in there, save, and there we are. And you can see our pie is absolutely huge. All right, so let's reduce the size of this pie chart by going to here. We can just put it in here. We're going to say style equals the style object here. And what we want to do is within here, we can just say maybe a padding of 20 pixels. And next, what I want to do here is uh, put a comma here. I'm going to say here width. And the width could be maybe 500 pixels. Let's save that. There we are. I guess we could do maybe 600 or 700 pixels. I guess that's fine. All right. Anyway, it doesn't matter too much. This is more than enough for us and quite acceptable. So what we want to do now is we want to make sure that these are clickable. So how do you make these clickable? So what we're going to do here is uh, we need to load a few items. First of all, we need to create an on click object. I'm going to say here, and this is a variable as well, so we can on click with capital C. I'm going to use that one. Number two is we need to have the reference, and the reference is when we click on this canvas it will understand that we are clicking on this canvas basically because without that reference it does not understand where we're clicking on so what we're going to do here we say your ref and i'm going to say your chart ref all right so then we have this but we're not done here because this ref here needs to be activated because this is a react item so we're going to say here just here at the very top and why at the very top because this is from react itself so i want to load that first then we'll load the chart.js item, and then afterwards we'll load basically the chart.js or React chart.js dependencies. Basically, that we're doing that is just a proper order. Of course, anything if it doesn't matter really how you prefer it, but this is my preference. So then, what I want to say is, I want to say I want to use the ref component here from string React. All right. So once I did this, we have here it is. Of course, it gives another item here because these two are still not yet defined. So let's go and define these two. We can say here constant. And let's get the chart ref will be equal. And this will be equal to what exactly? Well, it will be equal to the use ref functionality or component, which is a functionality in itself. So then what I want to do as well is another constant with on click which is basically triggering the event itself. So we're going to say event, we're going to register the event. And then what we're going to do is here, basically make a callback functionality by using a function error expression. And what I want to do is I want to record this event, the on click event, and then grab the values out. So what I need here is a built-in chart.js function. This is a component as well, so we need to import that later on as well. But what I will say here is we will need the Let's do console log. I'm going to say here get element uh, element sorry at event. And what this truly means is basically get the element. And if you're wondering what is the element again, go up here the art element. So when we click, oh, we have to draw of course our item here. Let's uh, let me just save this. Of course, we will still get an error because the get element at event is not defined. Why is it not defined? Because we need to import this. And this is imported from the React chart.js component. Put a comma, put it in there, save that, now it works. So what that really means is to get the element on click. So when I click on the canvas, specifically on one of these uh, pie slices or segments, which is an element, which is an arc element to be specific, when I click on this, I want to get certain variables or get the element at events that's basically it. we're going to get all the details of that specific arc on click that's what we're doing here all right so we have this here now and what we want to do then is we're going to say here but of course we need to get the chart ref because we are going to click specifically on that item we say here dot current comma event so basically then we are recording which canvas we're clicking on, on that specific canvas that we're clicking on, basically this is equal to that one here, and then here current, and then get the event. So if I click on this, open up the developer tab, and you can see, uh, hold on, there we are. Let's have to refresh, of course, and if you click on this, you can see here we get all the information here. Absolutely phenomenal. So now we get here, and if I click on the white space here, outside 
of the arc but within the chart for canvas basically you can see it's blank why is it blank because there's no values here but if i click on this there is a element in here with we can see the arc element the data set and the index number of that element itself all right so what i want to do i want to filter it so it becomes more intelligent so i'm going to see if and what i want to do is i want to just grab this entire item here if this dot length is larger than one or sorry more than zero so there would be a value or else it's blank array in that case show the value so that's what we're doing now put in here save this refresh all right so now if i click on this you can see here we get this and if i click here on the white space it doesn't show anything anymore so that clears up one of the items so the next thing what I want to do is I want to extract all the values in the data set and the index number. So how can we do this? And let's do here constant and I'm going to give this a name data set index number equals. And what I want to do is I want to grab all of this, put it in there, and we know that this is index zero. So we know already it's index zero, and then we say dot data set index. So we're going to put in here index zero dot data set index once i did that i can do another one here what i will do is as well immediately and then i'm going to confirm or test this as we did as we did so what i'm going to say here let's call this our data point let's do capital p and then in here i don't want the data set index no i want the index number and i, and I tend to give them a different name so you don't get confused with the namespace and with this so this is just or namespace and the variable or constant that we're using just for uh, for clarity's sake so now we have that we can just cut this out put it there and then we're going to do a console log here and let's start to show our variable so i'm going to say if you back tick back tick i'm going to use template literal dollar sign now i'm going to see a data set index num and let's say here this is our data set now we're going to say here and data will be the dollar sign indicated we're going to use the variable data point put that in there so if i save now refresh if i click on one you can see here data set index zero and data index zero which is correct this should be one and this is number two all right so now we get all of this stuff and let's start to work on putting in a as a link and this is really fun because let's do that one now i'm going to put in here comma we could do anything you could even get the variables of this anything you want but let's create a link here a link array and in this link array i'm going to put in three different websites i'm going to put in my websites here www.chartjs3.com comma then you have another one is well let's grab that one as well i'll just do it this one uh number four because chartjs has recently launched chartjs number four and finally we're going to put in here just chartjs.org which is the official documentation website if i save this refresh of course nothing happens yet because we still need to connect all of this so how do we connect this well we can just go to the data object here oh not there but this data and from data we can go to data set index zero and then to the link so how to do that we're going to say here let's do a console log again and i'm going to say here data dot data sets index zero dot and then we're going to say here uh, not data but link and this index zero is basically this variable so you can put that in there and then link here is basically the data point we have here above so if i save this refresh we can click here now and we should see here charges 3.com charges 4.com and charges org which is the third one all right so that's all confirmed final item how do we open then now a new link so let's say window dot uh, open and then we're going to say here the link itself we're going to grab this link which is basically this reference comma string variable and we will open up in a new tab we say here blank not black but blank all right semicolon here save let's remove this Save that, refresh, click on one, and there you are. Charge S3 opens up, click another one, Charge S4 opens up, and another one, 
charge.js.org. So if you're wondering why this one's not loading fast, because this site is still in, on the construction. But as you can see here, it works absolutely now.